Hello everyone, my name is Rindy, and if you have not yet heard me say this, I need one strength bonus. I need one strength bonus! I NEED ONE STRENGTH BONUS! This is my defense pure Iron Man, and after many struggles and challenges, I now only lack one strength bonus to hit twos with a poison weapon. Hitting higher affects my accuracy roll. Whenever you damage a player or NPC, you roll a 0 through your max hit. If my max hit is say higher than 1, being 2, I before could only hit a 0 and 1 on the hit chance, but now I can hit a 0, 1, or 2, which in turn increases my accuracy by 33% due to the lower chance of rolling a 0 hit between the only prior two options. By the way, yes, you can roll a 0 miss, which is much more common than a 0 hit. So yeah, that might be mumbo jumbo to some of you, but I'm looking at getting this to complete a fire kit on this account that could already take me a full inventory of supplies and around 150 hours of time inside of the fight caves. If I can cut down the need for less supplies because of those 6 hour logs on waves I'll be spending too much time on from not being able to hit a 2, then I can save myself a lot of effort. Not to mention I can save myself another 50 hours or so in the time poisoning the NPCs. Hitting 2s is not the only way to go for the fire cape, but it's the easiest, and I want to make this as easy as possible on myself, as well I'm going for completionist level goals across the entire build of this Iron Man defense pier. The fire cape is also not going to be the only end goal for this series. There are many things I can achieve on this defense pier Iron Man, and some things that's going to make this account extremely unique indeed. And with all of that in mind, I welcome you back to the Defense Saga, Episode 11. So yeah, after over 170 days of playtime, this is my current strength bonus. We're just lacking that one. And by the way, just a disclaimer for a lot of comments I've been getting, no, I cannot get obby legs. I need a fire cape in order to get into that portion of the Tizar city. I can't get tacits because I need 70 strength through bandos. And being a defense pair, I am one in every combat stat but my defense and HP. There is no other possible route to getting this extra strength bonus that I can see in the near future other than this permanent kilt. It gives us that one extra strength bonus exactly that we need in order to hit the two. Now there are two absolutely ridiculous routes to get this kilt, but they're the only way. One, I could catch around 6,000 lucky implings on average, rolling the elite clue table at 1 in 5, then the kilt as 1 in 1,275 on that elite table, or the second route. I could catch several thousand dragon implings and juggle elite clues for the steps I can't do. I can't do about 60% of the elite clue steps because they require me to wear gear I can't equip, complete quests I can't do because of the XP rewards, or enter areas of the map locked behind similar content I'll never be able to complete on this defense peer build. Yeah I know, you could say I'm a pretty restricted account. So anyways, why not take on both routes at the same time, that being the dragon, elite clue juggling, and lucky implings, and all in the most efficient way. Well that's what I'm thinking, and maybe we'll just get lucky enough to get that permanent kilt within the next year. In today's episode, I'm going to be doing the explaining behind the methodology of how I'm going to take this on in the most efficient way possible, and prepare my account for all of the elite clue steps that I can do, which takes longer than you think, as 65 Slayer is going to be one of these wrecks. And my combat stats, once again, are terrible. As well, I'll open some implants along the way, of course. But first, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor for today's video, and that is AG1. I've recently been taking more of an interest in my personal health as I get older, and this sponsor was perfect for me because AG1 is a nutritional drink I've been consuming every single day. It helps promote my gut health with a lot of probiotics built into the product, and I've noticed a lot fewer issues with overall stomach pain and indigestion I was getting on a daily basis. Throughout the day as well, I've just felt like I had a lot more energy, and the taste is honestly not that bad. It is a green drink, so it does have a little bit of an earthy taste to it. It's very mild though, and honestly, somewhat refreshing. There are tons of benefits with this drink, including your daily vitamins and tons of herbal supplements that allow you to be calm and productive throughout the day. At least, I've noticed this. It's great for your brain health too. It has vitamin B6, vitamin B12, folate, magnesium, green tea extract, and a lot more. It's great for energy and endurance. There's vitamin K2, manganese, riboflavin, vitamin B12, B5, and zinc. They also sell this product called AGD3K2. It has your daily dose of vitamin D in it and K2. D is going to be great because I don't always go out in the sun. Today's an exception, but here you go. You caught me. They sell AG1 in pre-packeted daily measured doses, or you can just use the scoop, one scoop a day, one minute a day, every day, that's all you need. Click my link to get a one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D3 K2 and five travel packs free with your first purchase. You can't put a price tag on your own health.
back on the topic of catching Lucky and Dragon Emplings for that permanent kilt, I wanted to do this in the most efficient way possible, and I've kind of developed a method, I believe, that should allow me to catch an amazing amount of Dragon and Lucky Implings versus the normal amount you would see in, say, Piro Piro, or just wandering around the entire world of Gilanor. And this method, on average, I calculated will grant me about 3 Luckies per hour and 30 Dragon Implings per hour. And to put this into perspective, when I was doing Eclectics for Medium Clues for the Spiked Manacle Strength bonus, I was in Piro Piro for over 100 hours, and I saw about 3 Lucky Implings and maybe roughly 30 Dragon Implings the entire 100 hour time span I was there. So with this new method I'll get into in just a little bit, we're going to be looking at a much higher rate. And to put this into perspective, an elite clue from a Dragon Impling is 1 in 50 chance, so on average we should be getting an elite clue less than once every 2 hours, and we say have a 20% chance of completing all the steps on this clue, but with the possibility of juggling clues out of the Impling jars being about 3 at a time, this puts us to a much closer 100% chance of receiving a clue reward and getting the entire elite clue completed. And we're going to be getting multiple of these, so I'd say we were going to be completing an elite clue once about every 6 hours. As well, we're getting 18 Lucky Implings on average in that 6 hour time span, so that is 18 rolls on the around 1 in 6,000 chance of getting the kilt from the Lucky Impling Jar. So what actually is my method though, because you're thinking how the hell is this guy pulling 3 Luckies an hour and 30 Dragon Implings an hour? Well you heard me say I spent 100 hours in Piro Piro, right, and I saw about 3 Luckies and 30 Implings, so what if we just had 100 separate accounts? Setting in 100 separate worlds in Piro Piro, the multiplier for that would be times 100, and that would give us about the same ratio of Luckies and Dragon Implings. Sitting inside Piro Piro, just letting naturally people catch them. Sometimes even bots are catching the nature Implings and magpies, so they're refreshing the spawns in the northwest side of Piro Piro quite often. So that was the plan. I was going to make 100 accounts. I was going to name each of these accounts based on the world they're in, and you'll see why here in a second, and then I'm going to get 17 Hunter on these accounts and enter via the crop circle so I don't have to do the Lost City quest on 100 accounts. From here I can sit in 100 different worlds with notifications up on Ruinlight, which will ping me and notify me via my username that actually will say World 488 Piro, and it'll say Dragon or Lucky Impling based on the Impling plugin and what I have notified on that plugin. These are all Ruinlight plugins and Ruinlight features, I'm just utilizing them in a way to where I can control possibly 100 accounts. I'm also planning on setting these accounts at 1 FPS and using 32-bit Ruinlight clients in order to maximize my space on my second computer and make sure my memory just doesn't crash these clients and hopefully this will give me notifications based on the username and the world every few minutes that I can look over and then go to on my alt account. Now I'm not going to be doing this today, but this is an example and the theory behind what I'm going to be trying whenever going for this long grind of getting the Fremenic Kilt. I also found an extra plugin on the plugin hub that just turns all of your Runelite pop-up notifications into Discord server notifications. So I could hook this Discord plugin to a certain server and then I could actually have it ping the server instead of, you know, my computer going crazy and pinging me every second with a notification sound and me having to look over and catch it. This would also allow me to put in the world instead of the username I wanted to at me with being my Discord username. This would allow me to therefore not even need these usernames and I could just set the world to each client, have 100 clients and yes, every few minutes I would have to alt tab and right click all these clients to keep them logged in per 25 minutes but it would still be worth it. I could get a lot of implants this way and they would all be fed to me via Discord and all through legal Ruin Light plugins. This is all just a theory right now, but I mean, to be honest, nothing seems like it wouldn't work, right? The only problem is the cost of membership. It's going to be costing me nearly a thousand dollars in membership every single month to keep these accounts going. So it's going to be a major cost to my wallet, not to mention my electricity bill is going to cost a lot because I'm running two computers at very high RAM. But if it is truly the most efficient way to get this kilt, I'm willing to sacrifice that. There are other active ways, including world hopping, that could almost get this many implings, but I want a very kind of AFK and easy way to do this. So that's the plans for later on, but in today's video, I won't be enacting this major plan. I'm just going to be preparing for it and getting all the elite clue requirements, including Slayer, which is honestly just going to be a terrible grind in itself. And who knows? 
I might get lucky just scouting implings out of Settled's Discord and paying random people to give me these lucky impling scouts. This is what I'm currently doing before enacting the 100 account plan. There's going to be a lot of lucky and dragon impling openings in today's video, and I might just get lucky enough to get the kilt before I have to enact $1,000 a month worth of membership. Like I said, I can only do about 40% of the Elite Clue steps in total. That's because, once again, my account's super restricted, I can't do a lot of quests, I can't wield a lot of equipment, I can't go to a lot of locations in the game. But there are some steps I can do, and I need to get the requirements for these steps as quick as possible before I even start to think about farming Dragon Implings for Elite Clues. First, I need 65 mining, because I need to make some Lovakinch kits tier 2. I'll also need 76 fishing, to fish a shark for a Sherlock step. I'll need 70 fletching to fletch U logs and to U long bows for another Sherlock step. I'll also need to gather some U logs and bow strings just in my bank because I need all the supplies just on me already in my bank. Whenever I'm going to be juggling these clues, it's going to be a lot easier than trying to juggle clues while gathering supplies. I still need to get Pyromancer legs as well as a straw hat and a Shazian plate body 5 for the singular equipment clue step I can do. Killing Shazian warriors on this account in 5 tier steps is going to be super fun. Fun. I also need to get some trading sticks, which I'll probably do by selling gems from the gem mine in order to actually get some of these to enter the woodcutting area near Taibuane. And lastly, I need to go get a face mask, but before I get the face mask, I need to get 65 Slayer. And that's going to be the most difficult part of this entire episode, is getting 65 Slayer. I'm going to be getting like 2 to 3k Slayer XP per hour. And if you make it far enough into the video, I'll let you know why that's so low. So I actually wanted to try and get Spirits of Elid up to a certain point in the quest. Unfortunately, there is a part of this quest early on you gotta telegrab something. I could get these awesome shoes, but unfortunately, I could not get to the part of the quest I needed to for an elite clue step, which is under the rift, through the door, in the genies area. You need to be further in the quest, and you'll need that magic requirement, so the Spirits of Elid step is a no-go here. Another side note, I found out Clue NPCs are no longer immune to poison after the poison update. That's probably unintentional, it might be fixed later on. But it makes this hard Clue step way easier, I don't have to waste a bunch of recoils and brews to kill this thing. Back on track with the Elite Clue step requirements, I do need to get 70 fletching once again for the Sherlock step to make you longbows. I am one fletching, so I'm literally hopping worlds on Lumberge Castle and cutting logs for the first few fletching levels. Once I'm 10 fletching, I'm going to go do Tourist Trap to get, I believe, 27 fletching, and that's surprising, I know. I'm one fletching, and I haven't done Tourist Trap of all quests. I haven't done a lot of quests, and I have over 150 days of playtime on this account. So yeah, it's a bit shocking, but um, another thing I wanted to do was save this quest, because originally, I'm a very bad boy. I was going to try and smuggle out Anna in the barrel to possibly use it as a tele block from things such as the Xerix amulet chest I was thieving before. But I decided to be a good boy and not even try that. Anna in the Barrel is still smuggleable through many means, but um, yeah, we're not doing that. We'll never need to do it. And I just decided instead, let's go ahead and get the Fletching requirement and complete that quest. Here we are, I'm sacrificing the possibility to ever smuggle Anna again. And I was wrong, I actually got 29 Fletching from that quest, which is huge. So we can go ahead and start our Fletching grind with a big bonus. <laughs> What's this man doing? This isn't the right account. Why is there so many arrowheads in his inventory? I don't know, maybe I'm using another unorthodox method to train a skill. And that is shared shops. Once again, there's very few shops that are shared between Iron Men and main accounts, but there are still some left. And I'm going to be stocking up a shop to keep the prices low, even though it's still going to be costing me quite a bit to buy these arrowheads. No one even knows this shop exists, it's in the back of the combat training camp and I'm selling 50, buying 50 at a time to keep it once again at a low price. Even though I do have 15 mil, these are still going to cost me a bit and a few mil to get 70 fletching. This just saves me a lot of time by not having to hop worlds and wait once again on those terrible Jagex servers to launch the new world. Now most people fletch broad arrows, but I'm going to be in a lack of slayer points and I'll explain that later on. Basically, Slayer and Slayer points are going to be extremely slow for me to get on this account being a hardcore. I don't want to go do Wilderness Slayer. I'm going to be resorting to Vanica. So yeah, this is the best method for now to get fletching up to 70. First time I've ever brought this account to the GE. 
So I'm feeling like kind of a free man right now. Getting some Fletching XP with some amazing immaculate fashionscape on. Once again, Earth Alter Teleport running all the way east with Staminas using the, the Agility Shortcut is my best option to get to the Canifus area. And there's a Lucky Implane scouted here. I wish I could get here quicker. And later, I believe, in this episode, we will be able to do this because we're going for Slayer Rings. And the Slayer Tower Teleport is going to be so, so handy to have. It's just going to take forever to get those rings. And here's the Lucky Implane. Please, just get lucky. <laughs> 1 in 6k chance. Adam and Dagger. No, no luck today. The scary thing about some of these lucky ampling locations outside of Piro Piro is it takes me forever to get to them. It took me like three minutes to run here and now it's crossing over to the mountain. So it's going to take another minute at this rate. I don't know. Hopefully they don't despawn. I haven't had any despawn on me yet, but I have had like dragons despawn on me. So I wouldn't be surprised here. Let's try and catch this thing. And two rune bars. All right. I'm feeling lucky on this lucky ampling musketeer hat. Why? That's an elite clue reward, I think. Pretty sure that's an elite clue reward, and that's a collection log slot. That is pretty cool, actually. I can equip that. I can fashion escape with that thing. This must be like the most popular place for settled scouts. Dragon longsword, good high alk value. I had to Narda scroll here and then use the carpet and then run all the way north. Luckily, got here in time. Let's see what this one has in store for us. Nothing. What? Oh, my loot tab says it gave me coins. All right, I was like, what is happening? We're in our fancy little hat here, giving us extra luck and a black longsword. It's not that lucky, actually. A lot of you have been asking me, like, where are we at in the series? Like, what is the actual time frame right now? Well, right now I'm doing the birthday event. If that puts anything into perspective for you, and yeah, we're going to get some cool holiday items. Speaking of cool holiday items, I got the dragon candle dagger. This thing uses stab bonuses and it's negative 100 stab. Now I have heard from the grapevine that they do intend on fixing this and it was not intentional but that they might leave the special attack as stab and that negative 100 bonus will make the special attack always hit zeros. Which is going to be kind of cool for some alt slayer methods and other things that these level 3 skillers can use. For me though, this dagger is pretty much useless. I actually found this one outside the guild in a collection log slot. I thought that was going to be something good, but I can never wield that bow. So it's not that hard of a collection log slot either if I do clues in the future. Another lucky impling and more air ruins. Probably the worst loot I can get. Here we go. I stand corrected. Fire ruins might be worse. So I got an elite clue nest from chopping mahoganies. I've been chopping mahoganies in my spare time. Ooh, and that's a guard in the wilderness. Probably not going to do that one. I'm going to drop that, but I've been chopping these in my spare time while I edit just because later on maybe construction? Who knows? Lucky Impling, Lobsters. So I did just get my first elite clue from Dragon Implings, and it's a Sherlock step, meaning I probably can do this one. Now I'm not going to actually do this step until I get more Dragon Implings in the bank so I can juggle elite clues possibly. Here it is, the big reveal of Runeful Helm. Wow. So these are the stats we're looking at now. Quite a few luckies, quite a few dragons. And finally at 65 dragons, I did get that first elite clue. I had not had one before this and it's a one in 50 rate. So pretty average for that first elite. I think I'm realizing how bad this grind is going to be. And that's why I literally made an account with one attack and gave it a bunch of variations of poison to steal weapons to see if maybe they forgot to put an attack wreck on one of these things. It looks like they didn't, unfortunately, but that's how desperate I am to find another route to my strength bonus right now. In the past, there have been some weird attack missing requirements, like the attack wreck on a dragon defender. They once even took the attack wreck off a of brine saber. They even didn't even have attack wrecks on steel halberds for like, at least, I would say, 10 years. So you never know. I tried it out though, and it was a failure. Those Twibawane teleports came in clutch. I'm able to get a lot of Lucky and Dragon Implant scouts here. And before, the route to this area was almost impossible. So we had 15 of those teleports. So, Death Runes. We've got our first Lucky scout in Piro Piro. And let's see if it is truly lucky. Another Black Longsword. Nothing good, my friend. Nothing good. Yay, free construction XP. I mean, 3 mil worth of construction XP. Here's another one. Oh my gosh, a U short bow. I've been waiting for this moment. Finally, a U short bow. I can add that to my bank. Another Mortania Impling. And a Rune Plate Body. Not bad. Good high alkable there. 
Dragon Mace did not even know that was on the clue drop table at all. Alright, here we are finally doing an activity that does not involve me catching amplines for once. I'm getting the 65 mining requirement. That's going to be for the Lovakinj kits I need to turn in for elite clue steps. This three spot at the mining guild is apparently better. That's all I know. I'm not three ticking granite by the way. I'm not doing it. I did it once on my other account. It's not worth it. Plus I've got low, you know, mining and I'm, I have a ruined pickaxe. And no HP cape on this account, so and no humidify and and almost nothing. This account is so restricted. I've been here several hours, but here it is, 65 mining. And speaking of several hours, that guy at the deposit box has just been dragging pickaxe specking it and running between the deposit box and the bank on and off for the last at least like three hours. So I'm pretty sure he's a broken bot. I'm mining the dirty lovakite or whatever this stuff is called and I'm going to be smithing it as well into bars, putting it into packs, ready to turn in because once again, if I'm going to be juggling elite clues, I just want all this stuff banked and ready to go and not having to, you know, mess with it while I'm dropping clues on the ground. So we're going to be here for, I believe, 110 bars. We've smithed all the armor sets at the Varrock Anvil and putting them into the crates now and that should be 10 crates. It should last us for many, many elite clues. I mean, if it doesn't, I can just go back and make more, but I'll have them just in case I have the elite clues juggled on the ground inside of my bank to use. I'm running out of bank space and I pretty much got the entire medium collection log in my bank and I realized I can put all this crap in my house and never have to worry about it again. As well, when I get the Shazian armor later, I can even put it in the armor case. So I've got 67 construction already. Why not make some storage in my house to free up some bank space? And that's exactly what I'm doing right this second. Oh my god, come on. I got another beaver. My last account, the only other one I play, I got a beaver at low wood cutting. And now, once again, I got a beaver at low wood cutting. I literally came to the wood cutting guild right now just to get about 30 U logs to make into unstrung U long bows to have in my bank for that elite clue step for Sherlock. And within, what is this, like 15 U logs, I pulled a beaver. I like don't even like woodcut U's, but uh, yeah, here we pulled a beaver on a U tree. Nice, I guess, even though this is literally, I hate this, this pet. This pet's the worst pet of them all, but now we have a pet, cool. Speaking of pets, I really want a Skatizo pet. I have all these emblems I'm putting together now from the Iron Dragon grind I did for like a fucking year. And that's a fair chance at Skatizo if I could kill it. The thing is immune to recoils. I believe it's immune to poison. It's like immune to everything. I don't think there's even a way for me to kill it. But yeah, I'm just going to bank these dark totems and just hope that one day there's some alteration or way to kill Skatizo. If you have any ideas, comment them below. I'm, I'm all ears right now. I got some bowstrings as well banked for the U longbows and now I'm mining some gems because I'm going to trade them in at Twibuano Village for some trading sticks as I can use those then in my bank to get into the mahogany tree area as fast as possible once again while juggling elite clues. By the way I still haven't gotten 70 fletching I needed more arrow shafts I did not have enough logs banked or at least ones that I wanted to use so I'm chopping maples while talking to Seibe on the Seibe cast and you can look up Rindy Seibe on YouTube if you want to listen to that one. I never realized how bad fletching was until I was an Iron Man. I swear they put more lucky implants in Mortania. There's that Mortania RNG just for Swamp Ludix, but I'm going to be using it for my own benefit. Joke's on you, Jagex. Let's see what we get from this thing. And we got a magic longbow. That could have been useful in TOB. Not really. I don't know what that could be useful for. So maybe if you were to make a grand tree locked Iron Man, you'd also get the same Swamp Ludix chances for lucky and dragon implants but you'd still likely get pretty shit loot. Finally, oh my god, 70 fletching. After training the skill on and off for literally like two months, I've gotten 70 fletching. Nice, one wreck down. You know, I thought I didn't torture myself enough, so I got an extra level. I'm just that committed to this account. 71 fletching. I'm actually just trying to use up the rest of these uh, arrow tips that I bought and didn't really calculate or think on before purchasing and using millions of GP to buy. I'm pulling out the harpoon now. You know what that means? I need to get that 76 fishing requirement. Fishing has to be one of my least favorite skills to train, and it is extremely slow. I actually trained to 66 fishing, and I utilized the two-tick swordfish method on Karind, and that was not very fun, so I stopped for months, and now I must return. Actually, never mind. Screw that. I'm going to be using three-tick normal rod fishing. I cannot do barbarian fishing because that gives strength XP and requires a strength level. 
I'm literally going to be three ticking using a normal rod and fly fishing. This is like 35k XP an hour, not even, but I'm going to be doing this till 70 fishing and then I'm going to switch to Temperos, something I've never done before, but apparently at 70 plus fishing is pretty much on par with the rates I was getting two tick sword fishing, which has a lot less effort involved as well. I hate two tick sword fishing. I'm sorry. Like, I can't do it right now. I just, I would rather even do this. And let's just be honest, my fashion scape right now is on point. Here we are after like eight hours, 70 fishing, <laughs> fly fishing from 66. Let's go do some temperos now. Check out that because I, once again, I've never been there in my life. But first, I'm going to catch this little kebit thing for its barb-tailed harpoon. It's like a wieldable harpoon. Obviously, I can't wield a dragon harpoon ever, but I can wield this thing, so it's going to save me some inventory slots at Temporos, which apparently is a good thing. So we now have our harpoon, and we have it equipped. So Temporos is going to be super fun. Like I said, we're looking at more XP per hour, probably around 60 to 75k XP per hour, specifically at 70 fishing. And we're going to be doing this solo, so the XP is a little bit better. I'm not going to be cooking the fish because we're pretty much just here for XP, not for more rewards. And yeah, I'm going to be just doing this solo and participating over and over again for the next like 10 hours to get 70 to 76 fishing. So finally, after several hours in the game, we got 76 fishing. And I was actually peaking at around 70 to 75k XP per hour doing these solo games. It was very much worth it. And I was in fact getting more than I could at this current fishing level to tick harpooning swordfish. And because that's around 60k. So I was doing great and there's some rewards to be reaped from this minigame. Okay, okay, I'll take it. Tackle box, it's unique and I believe we're under rate. So that's pretty good. I don't know how useful this thing is. Maybe there's going to be some kind of a nip in the future I can use it for. So I'm spending the next couple of hours cooking fish. This is all the fish I got from Temporos. And I'm going to be using this for Winter Tot because I still need to get the Pyromancer legs for an equipment clue step. And I'll get into the equipment clue steps last in this video. So there is one I can do and it's going to be, let's just say a bitch to get the items for this thing. More terrible loot from Lucky Implings and that's gonna segue me into how did I get my Slayer up and why am I wielding a 9900 cape right now? So my first form of gathering XP for Slayer was literally through Genie Lamps. I had gotten 9 to 33 Slayer through solely using lamps while doing other tasks on this account. But I needed something more. I needed 65 Slayer or at least 60 Slayer because I had around 90 Wild Pies Bank which boosts my Slayer by 5 each in order to do the Smoke Devil task under the Elite Clue step. I recently got 40 combat so I now could use Vanica which did speed up things quite a bit. I no longer was stuck to Turial tasks. But this also meant that I would be stuck to Vanica tasks which are almost just as bad. Now I could be doing Wilderness Slayer and getting a lot more points and a lot more XP per hour, but once again, I am a hardcore Iron Man and I do not want to risk that status out in the wilderness 24-7. Now Vanica does have a chance of giving me Earth Warriors, which are in the wilderness, and I will skip this task through Turiel or through points if I have to. Also Wilderness tasks give tons more points than Vanica, and points are something I'm kind of looking for. I want to be able to craft Slayer Rings. I also kind of want to be able to actually buy Broadbolt Fletching. But the Slayer Rings are going to be first priority because the navigation and transportation on this account right now is absolutely terrible and every teleport I can get including the ones from Slayer Rings are going to be super beneficial. I would need 300 Slayer points to afford Ring Bling to craft those Slayer Rings and that's going to be almost 100 Vanica tasks if I only do them every 10th task which is going to be the most efficient and doing Turial tasks every 9 tasks is probably what I'm going to be focusing on first for those Slayer points. Now if I get enough Slayer points for Ring Bling and I realize Turiel is just god awful in comparison to pure Vanica task, I'll probably switch over to Vanica task and just forfeit the ability to make broad arrows in the future. I would only be averaging 2-3k Slayer XP per hour with an alt, which would actually venom or poison the other NPCs, and whenever you are the last hit on an NPC, even one that you hit a zero on, you get half the Slayer XP, so I was only getting half the Slayer XP from these monsters, and I was having to wait for Venom to kill these things. Well, at least at first. Later on, we came to some more unconventional means of training Slayer. 
So a level 60 stat such as Slayer is going to be 273,000 XP, meaning this is going to be well over a 100 hour grind. So I looked towards other routes possibly for starting out this Slayer task, and that was doing Herbivore. Yeah, that might not make much sense because Herbivore is a hunter and Herbivore skilling activity. But I do get fossils, and I'm going to be able to use these fossils later on inside the lowest level of the Varrock Museum in order to get XP lamps, which can raise my Slayer. Now this caps out though at a maximum of 120,000 XP from fossil XP lamps, so that's not going to hit my final goal. But this looks worth it. When this is all calculated out, I'm looking at around 50 hours here to get 99 Hunter, and that should put me about the same as the rate of getting the fossils all completed. With my current XP, I should have around 53 Slayer already by the time I complete those fossils, meaning this method is pretty much the same rate as Turiel to Vanica. But I'm going to get the possibility of getting an Irby pet, as well as 99 Hunter for the cape teleports, trim my current farming cape, also get some more herb lore levels with the herbs from Irby, and I'll be getting a lot more Ceridoman brews which I'll be using in activities you've seen before like barrows and other things. So as ridiculous as it sounds, the most sane route to start this grind to 60 Slayer would be doing Herbivore and going for 99 Hunter along with those fossils. So before I do Herbivore I realized I probably want an herb sack that's going to be handy for farming as well. Yeah I'm already 99 farming but we're back at Tithe Farm and this is one hell of a grind. Anyways, we're going to be here for at least the herb sack. I might have to come back even later again for a straw hat for the equipment clue stuff that I can do for elite clues. I also decided to fletch while actually running the herby routes because they're just so long. I have plenty of stamina too so I can keep running these without having to walk thank god or else this probably would not be worth it. Here's our first level from purely herbivore, 92 to 93 hunter. It hasn't been that bad. Kind of relaxing actually, I can watch things on the side, semi AFKable. It's been about a week and we are one level away from 99 Hunter. I think we're on target right now with our fossils. Finally, after about 50 hours, 8 to 9 days, 99 Hunter, there we go. We're gonna go get the cape now. That's gonna help us because it's got 5 teleports a day to fill the pills. I won't have to use the clue scroll teleport scrolls that I rarely get to actually get to that area of the map. There we go, we've gotten our cape and we also have Black Chinchampa teleport. Probably never going to use that unless I just want to kill this account instantly. But like I said, these teleports are super helpful to get to Felda Pales area. And that's a, that's a good spot to be in. There's a lot of implings up south of this area. Okay, now look at this. This is beautiful. I have so many grimy herbs I'm going to show you all. This is from my 92 to 99 herby runs. And it doesn't look like a lot, but look at that. Over 300 toad flax even. Yeah, this is going to be good for brews. Now the overarching question though, and what I'm truly here for, is Slayer. So did I get enough fossils? Well, I didn't complete the fossil set as I believed I would. I'm just two large fossils short of being able to do that. I could stay at Herbivore longer and get just a little bit more XP, but honestly, I just want to go train Slayer and test around with traditional means of training Slayer. Well, not traditional, but alt means of training Slayer as I'm tired of running Herbivore for so f***ing long and this is honestly close enough. It should still get us to 53 Slayer at least. Have you ever been wrong about something? Because I think I'm about to be right this second. We just ran out of fossils and we are 500 XP till 53 Slayer. We did not make it to 53 Slayer. So those two extra fossils I was missing were important. But you know what I realized? There's one XP lamp I have not yet gotten on this account that I can. And that is from the Kebos Karind area easy diary. I just realized there's a diary for Karind. I didn't even know that was a thing. So I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go use that lamp and finish our way to 53 Slayer. So we get that nice head start on our way to 60 Slayer for the elite clue step. All right. So I completed the easy diary. I got the blessing, which I didn't even realize, but it's a new teleport. I love teleports in this account. It's near the woodcutting guild, even though it is only usable a few times a day. It's going to be great, and now I can use that XP lamp from the Achievement Diary to get my 53 Slayer. Alright, so we're ready for Slayer. I've geared my alt. It's got like the best range bonus. It's got Blowpipe, Serpentine Helm, because I'm going to be utilizing Venom for a lot of this. And it's got some weird teleports that I'll be using for Turiel and Vanica tasks along the way. Hopefully this all works out for the best. 
Once again, we're still only going to be getting about 2 to 3k Slayer XP an hour on average, depending on the task, of course, but uh, yeah, let's get right to it. I realize I've already messed up the gear and inventory on my alt account. I was trying to blow pipe some of these cave bugs, but realized I kept one hitting them. And I don't want to brew down my range, so instead I'm just going to bring an airstrike and a toxic staff switch. So that's going to allow me to take down some lower HP target tasks like these cave bugs here. I don't want to one hit them. I want to get the venom off, then hit them on the alt so I get the kill credit for the slayer task. This is way better. I can't just go ahead and kill these like normal on my defense spear because they regen HP way too quickly. So I see that I got the one hit off, so I know it's 100% venom because I'm wearing serpentine and the toxic staff. And now I just go in for the pokes. They can be zeros, they can be ones. So if I can get a one off, then the venom hits, I get full XP. And if I don't, then I just get half XP like there. So I'm getting two or three XP as you can see on these bugs. Another point I want to emphasize for the Slayer method is I can get the cancel symbol and it does not matter. I will still get half the XP because I was the last person who technically hit the ghost even if it's for a zero. So I'm still getting half XP and multi-combat Slayer tasks on this account are going to be by far the best because I can tag multiple NPCs with Venom without the Venom going away, and then I can tag the zero on them afterwards and get multiple XP drops, multiple kills in a matter of seconds while I'm waiting for the Venom to go down on, say, another NPC. So we're killing six ghosts at a time practically, sometimes seven on this specific task here. Now some tasks I won't even use an alt, like these spiders here, they're just so easy to kill. I super pot up in my best gear and just poke them to death with a swift blade. This is going to be quicker than trying to alt a 1 with a venom rather than a 2 and wait for venom to go down on NPCs like this or other NPCs like rats for instance and sometimes chickens are the 3 that I will have to kill just on my own. Now apparently with the new poison changes, temporarily at least, poison was available for cows which would have been great for multi-combat cows like here in Hostidious. But I'm finding out now that they reverted it back, so Cow's Moo Timer once again does affect the poison, and cows are now technically immune to poison yet again. So I'm going to be having to go a different route for cows. So here is that different route for cows. These don't have Moo Timers, and I have Mortania access once again with one prayer. Wink wink. So we're going to be using the zombie cows as they still count towards cow tasks. They also count towards zombie tasks, so I'll be using them in multiple tasks. And I'm going to be using the trident airstrike approach here and hitting them, then tagging them with my defense spear. Now this is a little bit more tricky because it's single combat. I'm going to try and keep the cows off of me so I can tag multiple at a time. Like here, I'm trying to run away from the cows and not get hit so I can tag another cow like there and there and there. And yeah, the single combat NPCs are a little bit more tricky, but they're still definitely doable at a decent rate. Speaking of single combat areas, the Slayer Tower is one of the worst with not very many safe spots. I usually can only kill about two crawling hands at once with the alt tag method. And tasks like these just really slow down the XP per hour rates that I'm looking at. And if I just had all multitask with all high level variants, the XP would definitely go up. But unfortunately, crawling hands are a task that I cannot avoid. What's worse than crawling hands? Cave crawlers. Crawling everything just sucks in general. I mean these are the absolute worst tasks because there's so many of them, they're aggressive to you, they poison you, it's hard to even hit two at a singular time unless you wait for unaggression which is 10 minutes. So this task is probably I would rank the worst out of the lot and of course I got this task more than any other task. Now once again I want to point out that multi is so important. Even though this task is technically more dangerous and takes a lot more time and therefore isn't as many slayer points, well its XP is just so great. Versus normal banshees in the slayer tower, those are terrible XP and they're very hard to kill. So I go down here in the catacombs, kill the higher variant of the NPC, and I'm rewarded with a lot more XP and honestly I think I can almost get the task done quicker just because it's in multi. Warped Jellies are another one of these variants that are higher level but are actually quicker to do in multi. K 
killing these bats is absolutely ridiculous. I'm trying to safe spot them in a place that has no safe spots. Some of these tasks, I just had to play around and figured out what worked best, like this weird three bat spot in Shazian that is barely in multi-combat zone. Why did I do Ernest the Chicken? What is this task? All right, we're maximizing our magic defense bonus for the Killer Watts task. This is what we're wearing. Here is the chickens, otherwise known as the birds task I was mentioning. This is just the easiest way to do it and get it out of the way so I can get more points. I'm just going to be super potty and killing these as fast as possible. You cannot poison them. Once again, they have a squawk timer, not a moo timer. Don't worry, I have found the most ridiculous multi-spawn of rats, literally in the middle of nowhere in a corner of the map likely no one has ever been in Karin. On one of my Vanica tasks now, this does kind of get a bit scary, but luckily we have the DFS, so we should be safe. I had to kill dogs. I had to do it to get 55 Slayer. All right, so for Desert Lizards and Rock Slugs, it's a bit different. I don't have to hit the zero on the NPC. I just kill it all the way on my alt, then use the Ice Cooler or Salt on the NPC, and I get half Slayer XP. I can finish some of these tasks early and start heading towards the Taskmaster while the actual last NPC is dying because I know I'm going to get the kill credit. Now, I mentioned a slight change in the Slayer method later on in this video, and this is where I realized and remembered that this was a thing. Now, while doing the dwarf task, there's only three dwarves in multi-combat in the upstairs of this Lovakinge house. There used to be a lot more downstairs in a pub, but they've switched the multi-combat map over Zaya. They've switched the layout of Zaya so many times that I don't even know where anything is anymore. So I found this spawn and I was like, damn, this is super slow waiting for Venom. But what if I timed my attack on the first account with the attack on the second account, and then maybe I could actually kill these NPCs as long as the attacks are on the same cycle. So I pulled out an MSB imbued, which has the same three tick attack cycle that my swift blade does. And by doing this, I was able to first attack the dwarf on my alt account, then attack it last on my defense peer. Because I attacked it technically last, even though the projectile takes a while to hit with the MSB, I could then cycle through and always get the last hit of damage technically on the Slayer task, giving me that half kill credit XP. As long as everything was timed perfectly, this would definitely speed up my task inside multi-combat zones by utilizing the MSB imbued and my Swift Blade in order to no longer have to wait for that entire Venom cycle to tick down on each individual NPC. So a lot of multi-combat tasks with less NPCs in the area, this was the best to use it for. Venom really wasn't as quick as just solely MSBing and then timing my attacks so that I got the Slayer drop on my defense pier. Finally, after literally 100 tasks, 9 tasks Turial, 10th task Vanica, I was able to afford the 300 point ring bling and I was about 57 slayer. I didn't think I wanted to go back to Turial at this point and god we're just gonna do Vanica all the way because it's almost double the XP per hour being 4 to 5k XP per hour and I don't want to sit there for an extra long time just to fletch some broad arrows. So we're gonna leave it at that. We're gonna make around 1000 slayer rings as I need that many teleports for many activities, farm runs, barrows, all kinds of things, amplings. So I literally bought 1100 Slayer Gems and I have a lot of gold bars in my bank from Eclectic Implines. As dumb as it sounds, this is a huge milestone for the account. Now this is one of the better tasks I can get from Vanica, but like I said, Vanica tasks are almost twice as much XP per hour just doing them flat outright. So these Fire Giants are giving me 77 XP per kill, for instance, and I can Venom around 6 of them at a time. It's super good XP per hour this task. Another example of this is Shades in the Catacombs. Once again, the Catacombs and just the multi-combat area is amazing. These are dropping 57 Slayer XP a kill, and I can Venom like 9 of these at a time. Okay. 
Okay, not all Vanica tasks are good. For example, this one, I literally went through the entire desert, tried into every single swamp lizard, then went on my alt to have to throw these ice coolers on them. This was a long task that gave awful XP. Another use of the three tick MSB mechanic, these are the only two hobgoblins in multi, so there's less NPCs, meaning I'm not going to venom, instead I'm going to use the MSB imbued. There we go, two more levels, I've been doing Slayer for a lot longer than I should be. I also took on a ghoul task solo, I wanted to see if I could luck out and maybe get a ghoul scroll for possibly a champion's cape in the very long term future and I found out I can only kill about 20 of these max per hour so that's about 1 in 5,000 chance 250 hours on average for a ghoul champion scroll that's gonna be fun this should be it this should be 60 slayer there we go finally it only took me over 100 hours to get 60 slayer but we've got it probably the slowest slayer grind if not one of the slowest slayer grinds ever seen in this game Equipment steps or equipment step. I really should have labeled it with no plural because there's literally one equipment step We can do once again for these elite clues. So yeah, first of all that means I'm gonna have to go back to tithe farm I fuck hate this mini game But we're gonna have to do it once again post 99 farming because I forgot to plan for this here We go. We're gonna get the straw hat. It only took us over an hour, but we can now finally wear it and a collection log slot. Maybe one day we'll get the full outfit, but I don't know if that's going to be anytime soon. I've spent another few hours at Wintertot, gotten another level, and we have now acquired the Pyromancer legs. Luckily, I already had the other pieces, so that was just next in chronological order. So that leaves us just with the Shazian Plate Body 5 that we need to get for this equipment clue step. Okay, so I did not realize this was going to be so difficult, but even the first tier of this NPC has a decent defense level, has 50 hit points, and I'm realizing now is likely immune to poison because I've stabbed him quite a few times and he's regen. So I don't think I'm going to be poisoning these guys because they do have text over their head. I was kind of fearful of this, and unfortunately we might be relying on recoils and swift blade hits to take us through the advanced second, third, fourth, and five tiers of these soldiers. So I've banked all my gear pretty much. I have no more defense bonus for the most part except for the stab bonus from the helm. I lowered my defense even with wizard mind bombs at the bank so he can hit me more frequently so my recoils can activate more frequently. Yeah, we're killing this thing somewhat quicker it still is taking a while because he's using a 2h he's hitting me very infrequently here but there we go that's our first piece and we do need to kill each of the tiers i believe five times you have to get all pieces of that tier then you move on to the next one so for a normal account you would just be whipping these things down in a matter of seconds for me it's going to take like a whole inventory of food per kill even at tier one on these soldiers so as you can see, I'm using Wizard Mind Bomb still. Luckily we have thousands of these, but we're running out of food. I'm using so much food just killing one of these things. I'm using a whole inventory and now we're down to tuna. So I might get some more pizzas later on or something of better healing power because like I said, we're still only on tier one. I don't know how we're gonna take out the higher tiers with just recoils. We're on tier two finally. It's been almost an hour since we've started actually killing these things. So yes, it does take a while and I've moved up to lobsters pretty much for the tier two kills. Tier three still seems to be doing okay with lobsters. Tier four seems to barely be doing well still with lobsters. A full inventory of lobsters, pretty much nothing else besides recoils, but we're now getting the tier four pieces. Tier 5 finally, the final tier, but by far the worst. Higher defense, higher stats. It has a lot more HP. It has 25 more HP levels above its previous tier. It's sitting at a whopping 90 HP. So that's why I've actually brought my little trick here once again, fried onions. Now I have to see though if I can eat these quick enough because I am wizard mind bombed down all the way to practically one defense and the fried onions only heal five each. So I gotta see if I can cook these, make these, and put these together fast enough, which it's already looking like this is not going to happen as this guy can hit tens, and every time he hits me, it interrupts my actual making of the fried onions. We're gonna have to maybe think of a new plan here. 
Now pineapple pizza is my other option, healing 22 HP a slot versus the 50 HP a slot from the fried onions is still not going to be enough to take down his 90 HP, even if I were to fill my entire inventory with these pizzas. I could use baskets of strawberries, but I don't have very many of those and I want to preserve those for later Barrow's runs. I was thinking, and sometimes the simplest solution is the best. The bank is not that far away, and I could come and run before each Shazian 5 tier kill, drop an inventory of food on the ground, then juggle that inventory of food with a new inventory of food once I hit the bank, which would give me over 40 slots of food and recoil damage. <laughs> Of course, pizza wasn't the only food that I had to juggle. Finally, I had acquired the full Elite Clue Step set, and the only one I could get at that. I also got full Shazian 5, I finished the entire set, and finished the collection log for Shazian, and put that in my house. There was one last task I wanted to take on for today's episode, and that is completing a singular Elite Clue. I had around 50 Dragon Imps saved up in the bank, and I was going to try and get a second elite clue so I could juggle it off the first one I got earlier, which is a Sherlock step, which most likely I could do. Okay, so no, I never got a second Elite Clue to juggle, and that first one ended up being a failure. I never completed it. I'm sorry to disappoint you. We also didn't get any permanent kilts from Lucky Implines. We got some cool things, though, like a Musketeer hat. And now we're all prepared for the Elite Clue and Lucky Implane grind. Well, sort of. I gotta go make 100 accounts real fast. Although we didn't end today's video on the high note, I hope you enjoyed it. And who knows, that strength bonus might be coming even sooner than both you or I even expected. Let's just say, as soon as I realize there's going to be something that's an extremely long grind, I usually find a way around it. I'll see you all soon, and if you enjoyed the video, please leave my channel a subscription.